I'm Greg, the Nerd Historian, and this week on Most Glorious of All YouTube Channel, the Speculative Fiction Almanac is going Soviet. It is the week of January 29th through February 4th, and we are celebrating the brain behind the Black Cauldron the maker of momentous milestones, and the godfather of government dystopias. That's the start, yeah. On this channel, we honor the creators who ask, what if? These creators give us new worlds to explore, and speculative fiction is where those worlds live. I started this channel to share my love of discovering those new worlds. And if I do my job, you'll leave here excited to read something new. Affiliate links are included in the video. A profit isn't too dirty a word here. Let's celebrate some birthdays. January 20th, happy birthday to Lord Chudley Alexander. Chudley is a name we do not hear enough. The Prydain Chronicles, a five-book coming-of-age story about Terran, an assistant pig keeper, who dreams of becoming a great warrior of the kingdom of Prydain. Of course, there's an evil sorcerer, an army of the undead, and a pig with the gift of prophecy in the mix. Wonderful high fantasy. Disney adapted the first two books in the series into the movie The Black Cauldron, which was considered Disney's worst until they released Rise of Skywalker. January 20th is also the birthday of comics artist and television producer Dennis Cowan. In 1994, I received the Superman and Batman magazine, which featured superheroes that weren't like the ones I was used to seeing. Dennis Cowan and four other partners founded Milestone Media to increase the representation of minorities in comics. This brought characters like Static Shock, Iconic Rocket, and hardware to comic book shelves across the country. Later, as a television and animation producer at DDT, Cowan was responsible for bringing the Boondocks to air. He also drew the cover for Jizz's album Liquid Swords. On February 1st, Zdiem Rozdenya to Yevgeny Zemyetin who wrote the first book to be banned in Soviet Russia. We is the first dystopian novel, and as a satire on the newly founded USSR, the censors didn't think it was so great. You could say the party was over for Yevgeny. Well, all the jokes can't be good. You've got to expect that once in a while. Smuggled out of the country, We was published in 1924 and went on to inspire Brave New World, The Dispossessed, 1984, Player Piano, and Logan's Run, which is a pretty impressive line of descent. Yevgeny died penniless and in exile, but that wasn't the worst thing that happened to him. We also inspired Anthem by Ayn Rand, whose birthday is February 2nd. I can't recommend her books because I think they have the depth and excitement of a Don't Tread on Me bumper sticker. So let me recommend instead a satire that I helped to create, Atlas Sharded by Soviet Fourth Grader. It's puerile potty humor protest music, but it's a lot more fun than asking who is John Galt for 1100 pages. If you're an Ayn Rand fan, let's just agree to disagree move on. February 2nd, Groundhog's Day, happy birthday to Thomas Dish, who wrote light-hearted fun-filled romps like Camp Concentration, where prisoners are injected with syphilis that makes them super smart, but kills them in nine months. And that reminds me of a story that's so dirty I'm ashamed to think about myself. 334, a dystopian novel of loosely connected stories set in a decaying New York of 2025, and the genocides, no where aliens exterminate the human race with giant plants. And then in 1980, he wrote The Brave Little Toaster. It's my, I don't know what that means, but... It's... Funny guy. On February 3rd, happy birthday to Victor Lavelle. Lavelle has written a number of award-winning books, Slap Boxing with Jesus, which is also a set of interconnected stories set in a less decayed New York, The Ecstatic, which was compared to the work of Ken Casey and John Kennedy Toole, and The Ballad of Black Tom. Lavelle's a novel of sorcery and skullduggery in Jazz Age New York, from the cover blurb. In a New York Times interview, Lavelle made one of the most poignant observations that I've read. Horror is a fearless genre. So much writing glances off the hardest and worst experiences, but horror confronts the worst that happens. Sometimes the worst can be defeated, but just as often it can't. 
Nevertheless, it can be addressed, acknowledged, rather than tightly resolved. A good no horror novel doesn't lie to you. Each week, I like to prepare a glimpse into one of the books featured on the episode. I give you my summary of a section of the book in the form of a storyboard. This week, I'll be storyboarding the opening chapter of We by Yevgeny Zemyatin. Our narrator, designated D-503 by the totalitarian One State, is recording an announcement from the newspaper in his journal. In four months, the Integral, the spaceship that D-503 is helping to build, is headed for space to spread amongst those races of distant stars who still dwell in that primitive state called freedom, the happiness of unity with one state. The newspaper announcement instructs each, according to his own ability, to create works of expression that celebrate the glory of one state. This will be the first imposition on the stars of the integral. D-503 titles his journal We, for it belongs to We, the people of one state, and is the record of We, the people of one state. We love the city, not beyond the great green wall surrounding it, the terror of unconquerable nature persists in perverse madness. Beauty is the aesthetic of subjugation of control. The instinct of non-freedom is the deepest yearning of the human soul. And yet, as O90, D503's state-designated sexual partner, arrives for the walking hour, D503's mind begins to wander. As they stroll down the street, the pipes of the music factory playing the one-state march under a cloudless sky, D-503 remembers a picture in a museum which depicted the outlaw chaos of the world 1,000 years ago, before one state. D-503 bursts out laughing. How could this ever happen again? And then D-503 imagines this world is his creation, like the work of some god of old. A woman and a man are walking next to D-503 and O-90, and the woman turns to him. I believe you just imagined you created me, she says, and she bursts out laughing. Of course she knows my thoughts, thinks D-503. We are one. We are identical. The woman smiles. Are you sure? Her name is I-330. We are all different, she says. O90 interrupts. We are all the same, she says. And he is assigned to me. I-330 smiles. The clock booms. The walking hour is over. I-330 takes D-503's hand. Come see me, she says. And I will, says D-503, if I get the order. You will, she says. You will. O90 wants to return to D503's apartment for an afternoon tryst, but sexual contact is scheduled by one state, and they are not due for intercourse until the day after tomorrow. D503 kisses O90 on her untroubled brow, but he is thinking of I. If you are interested in any of the books from this episode, there are links in the description and during the end titles. If you've enjoyed this birthday party, let me know with a like like to celebrate more creators next week, be sure and hit that notify and subscribe button. And if you're adding a book to your reading list, drop it in the comments. Once again, I'm Greg, the Nerd Historian. This is the Speculative Fiction Almanac. Until next week, keep reading. Oof, this hat is hot. There's a huge shadow across your shirt from the hat. Shots fired.